today we will discuss about the types of footing of foundation and their uses foundation of footing it is a substructure constructed in the soil below the superstructure the main function of a footing is to distribute the load coming from the superstructure into the soil foundation also increases the stability of the structure and minimizes settlement of the soil next types of footing depends upon the type of soil on which foundation is constructing the type of superstructure and amount of load coming for which the foundation is to be constructed the depth of the soil at which safe bearing strata exist based on depth criteria there are mainly two types of foundations shallow foundation and deep foundation if the width of the footing is greater than its depth then it is shallow foundation if the width of the footing is equal to or lesser than its depth then it is considered as deep foundation we know that the type of footing mainly depends upon the load and type of foundation soil if the soil is of low bearing capacity and the load is to be supported by footing is very high then we'll go with deep foundation if the soil has adequate bearing capacity at reasonable depth then we'll go with shallow foundation next from point of view of design shallow foundations may be of following type spread footing combined footing trap footing raft footing let us discuss one by one in detail spread footings are those which spread the imposed load of a wall or column into the soil the spread footing supports either a column or wall in that isolated footing if a footing are provided under individual column separately then that type of spread footing is called isolated footing isolated footings are provided when the columns in a building are not closely spaced loads from the column are less and safe bearing capacity of soil is high most commonly in residential buildings commercial buildings isolated footing is used these isolated footings are usually square rectangular or in circular in sections and the isolated footing can be provided in the following kinds simple footing stepped footing sloped footing simple footing simple footing it is also called as flat footing pad footing or plain footing this type of footing is provided under each column independently as shown in the figure this type of footing as uniform thick single slab structures next is stepped footing nowadays this type of footing is outdated in this stepped footing as shown in the figure the footing slab are stacked one upon another and forms as a steps next is sloped footing it is also called as trapezoidal footing in this case the concrete base does not have uniform thickness but is made sloped at 45 degree angle when compared to flat and stepped footing in sloped footing usage of concrete is less though it reduces the cost of footing so for most of the constructions sloped footing or the flat footing is preferred next type of spread footing is strap footing if a footing is provided throughout the length of the wall then that type of spread footing is called strap footing strap footing can also be provided as simple footing and stepped footing usually masonry walls have stepped footing with a concrete base strap footings are commonly used as foundation of load bearing walls loads on footing is relatively modest with a good bearing capacity of soil for residential and commercial buildings this strap footing is used next type of footing is combined footing A footing which supports more than one column is called combined footing. In any type of building construction, if the columns are closely spaced, then the footing of two columns will overlap each other. It means it creates a lack of space to cause individual footing. Therefore, footings are combined in one footing, then it is treated as the combined footing. There are mainly two types of combined footing: rectangular combined footing, trapezoidal combined footing. rectangular combined footing the combined footing for columns will be rectangular in shape if the columns carry equal load then it is considered as a rectangular combined footing next if the columns carry unequal load the footing is of trapezoidal shape then it is considered as trapezoidal combined footing sometimes it may be required to provide a combined footing for column and a wall next type of footing is strap footing it is also called as cantilever footing if the independent footings of two columns are connected by a beam it is called strap footing a strap footing may be used where the distance between the columns is so great that a combined trapezoidal footing become quite narrower with higher bending moment in that case as shown in the figure 
each column is provided with independent footing and a beam is used to connect the two footings usually when the columns are of heavily loaded or eccentrically loaded then we will prefer the strap footing or cantilever footing next type of shallow footing is raft foundation raft foundation is also called as mat foundation in some buildings the loads are heavy but the allowable soil pressure is low then if we use the spread footing it covers more area to spread the load over the large area with less depth and even the spread footing may overlap each other and may and it may cost more so in that case more economical type of footing we can use is mat or raft foundation mat footing is a combined footing that covers the entire area under the structure and supports all walls and columns mat footings are used to support storage tanks industrial structures silos bunkers cooling towers chimneys etc this is all about the types of shallow foundation and their uses next deep foundation in next video we will see about the deep foundation and types of deep foundation and their uses please subscribe to civil today like and share the video thank you for watching